What's up guys? I've been having a great time going through the old K1 Max fights with you, commentating. People are enjoying it, they want to see more. So today we're going to look at Masato versus Mike Zambidi number one. Now, why did I choose to do this fight in particular? Well, somebody commented the other day in the Bukau fight about Masato getting preferential treatment in Japan. And I'm not going to argue with that because I've definitely seen preferential treatment for him. But I want to go back and watch this Mike Zambidi versus Masato actually score it as I commentate do my best to actually score it objectively because I remember years ago watching it and being a little confused by the decision so I want to go back today and see what really happened see if my understanding of kickboxing now allows me to understand why the outcome of the fight was the outcome of the fight so let's go and throw this fight on this is an exciting one Mike Zambidi always brings lots of action let's go so starting off here a little stare down I believe this was 2003 and I want to say the quarterfinals so the first fight of the night the first fight of the night is always nice because at least the guys are fresh. Of course, they're going to have in their minds, oh, I have two more fights tonight if I want to win. So maybe they're holding back a little bit. But overall, I'd say this is a good indication of who is actually better in the quarterfinal. I've made that mistake before. I did one eight-man tournament and I held back a decent amount in the first uh, the first bout, the quarterfinal. And I shouldn't have done that. I should have just gone all out, which is what I did in my future fights. So we're underway now. You're going to notice Mike Zambidi is always punching wide. It's a very wide puncher. It's very rare to see him come down the middle. And like I said, I'm going to try and score this objectively here. See if I can actually come up round by round with who won it. And at the end have a conclusion for you. So, so far nothing of significance has landed. i just say it's pretty open right now. Dead even. It's a very bouncy match. They're both very light on their toes. Masato settled down a little. So that's a big shot, but it didn't really land. Went off the guard. That went off the guard. Nice low kick. Obviously, Zambidi's on the has the edge on the scorecard already, though. That was a nice hook. Definitely puts him up higher. He's just going to be a hard dude to fight if you're not going to be good at closing the range. And Masato likes to fight in tight. So it's not the best fight for Masato. But a lot of people, as good as Zambidi was, a lot of people picked him apart when they were able to use length against him. Koshenko, Sato, Bukau, they all did jobs. It's such a good job fighting him. So you have to see how many of these... Ooh, nice body shot. Nice little, nice little spring. He's so springy on the way in, Zambidi. Masato landed that nice low kick, but good overhand counter. Ooh, he landed that shot. He's lucky his leg got swept out because he would have had some more power behind that. Again, nice little body shot there. He's so good at faking, like the punch is going to come low and then it comes high. Another good overhand. Damn, Zambidi on my scorecard right now is definitely up. He's leading the round, no question. Masato will have to do something significant to get back into it. That was a nice Superman overhand. That was a good knee. I don't know what happened there. Oh, we got the eight count. That was odd. And hopefully we'll see in the replay what actually happened there. But right away, just K1 rules you lost the fight. Or, the, sorry, you lost the round. You have to get a knockdown to come back. I mean, that knee just might have landed right on his liver and it hurt him. I don't know why he was shaking his leg out. That's an amazing comeback for Masato. <laughs> that, that explains to me then, okay, how he uh, probably won the fight. Yeah, I'm assuming that knee definitely hurt him because he's just trying to light him up with that left knee now. Look at Zambidi fight back, though. Getting those body hooks and those head hooks out of the clinch. Well, that was definitely a 10-8 round. So the question is going to become, does Dan Zambidi win the next two rounds, which should have forced a draw? Because I didn't remember that knockdown. And if Masato draws or wins one more round, either or, unless Zambidi gets a knockdown, he's automatically won the fight. I'd love to see a replay. Hopefully they show one here what happened. I would assume that somehow his leg shut down after the, the knee to the body. But I'm just guessing. 
That was the uh, the president of K1. Come on, guys, replay. We want to see what's happening here. Hmm, it was odd. I don't know if I've ever watched a K1 fight where they didn't show a replay. Hopefully we'll get to see that at some point, but definitely we're scoring that round 10-8 from Masato. Back then they didn't do any point differential, like if Zambidi won the rest of the round and Masato scored a knockdown, at the end of K1 they would have given Masato a 10-9. You could come back, but at this point it was just you get a knockdown, it's automatically 10-8. Score this round very closely. I'm gonna we're gonna pay lots of attention to see if there's any chance Masato wins it. Good little angle there from Masato on the flying knee just to get out of the attack point. Those low kicks I think would be a good a good idea for Masato to implement, but you'd have to keep his left hand very high because that overhand just like Zambini threw there, that's gonna come very often after a low kick. Got to keep your hands up when you low kick against Zambidi. Yeah, so far I'd give a, a little edge to Zambidi just off those those kind of counters right there, but it's still a close round. Love the way he gets a left hook going. Those knees definitely are are not working out well for him. It's a smaller dude who doesn't want to get his head down within that knee range. Got a little little bit better there getting his head out of, out of the way before he got clenched up completely. Didn't take that low kick well or that one. Those are going to be high scoring, high scoring shots damage wise. Because it looks like damage when you take a low kick like that. If you can just put a poker face on and bend into it, the low kick might not score that high. But in that case, when you show that, yeah, it's definitely not good on the scorecards. That's such a nice left body hook. No setup. Good overhand. Nice counter shot there. One Masato's hook went high. Zambidi's went low. I think they both landed. Stylistically, their, their two styles make a fantastic fight. Good counter shot from Masato there. See, he's lo when he throws his low kick, he's letting his hand fall, which is terrible against Zambidi. Got to keep those hands up. Good counter hook again. He's timing it quite nicely. Oh, big overhand there. But he, he counter hooked again there. Masato got the counter hook. Zambidi right back. It's a very... Oh, nice knee. Very close round, actually. It's hard to score because we go knockdowns first. Oh, big overhand again. Oh, yeah. All right, I'm back to giving the edge to Zambidi on this round, personally. It was very close up to that moment. It's very hard to score these rounds because it really depends on how significantly you score the body shots and how significantly you score the low kicks. Because Zambidi's head punches were definitely, they looked the most damaging. They clearly looked the most damaging. Um, and I think we just saw a little bit of bruising there on Masato's cheek. But Masato landed some nice low kicks and he did that nice step through knee. Without the sound effects, it's, or the sound, it's hard to tell how hard that was. This low kick here. Yeah, when you turn sideways, he didn't take it great. But I think I would still edge that one out to Zambidi that round personally. The headshots are always very hard to score against Masato too. Like how damaging are them? Be, are they? Because he takes them so well. We all know that Zambidi. If you've watched Mike Zambidi before, those overhands often just put people out. And Masato's head moves a little bit, but it doesn't look like it's significant damage to him, which is pretty crazy. Just shows how tough, how strong his neck is, or whatever, whatever that situation is. Maybe his neck is just on point. With that strength, he can hold his head in position so much his brain doesn't get jarred. I'm definitely interested in this round to see if Zambidi wins it. Because if he does, in my opinion, we could go. We should have gone to a draw. 
Sato's definitely eating some of those high shots early. Again, I mean, I think he got a little deflection on that one, but still doesn't look good. That one was blocked. That one looked a little blocked too, off the guard. Once again, off the guard. I'd like to see Masato get back to the counter because Zambidi's very good at throwing his own initial shot, but he, he leaves his head a little bit open. See, those are, they look explosive, but those are all blocked. So, I mean, how highly do you score them when they're off the guard? Ooh, that one was good. That went through. Well timed again. Masato threw the low kick, but didn't protect himself from that overhand right. Hmm. Definitely Zambidi round so far. Even more so than the second round, I'd say. So far, I have Zambidi up much more significantly than the second round at any point. And again, yep. Yeah. Overhand. And it's always hard to tell at this point, is Masato easing back a tiny bit because he knows he has two more fights and he thinks he's won? Or is he just getting picked apart right now? I'm assuming he's probably just getting picked apart. Good hook. Just being a little careless with his hand height right now. I would get those hands a little higher and work on the counter shots. Nice knee, but right away ate it because he ate the overhand because his hands weren't high. Nice control there in the clinch. Keeping Zambidi at bay while just lighting his body up with the knees. Swing and a miss. Masato's going to have to do something drastic in my mind to take this round. Another cross from Zambidi. I'll do a video on how to escape the clench. I actually think I might have one. If I do, I'll throw, the, throw uh, the link up there. Because when you get caught in that double hand plumb, you should be able to get out. It's not as hard as you might think. Nice hook again. Masato hasn't really landed anything this round of note. So the fight is done, guys. How do you score it? What do you think? I personally... Mm, man, this is a hard one. 10-8 first round, no question for Masato. 10-9, no question for Zambidi in the third. The second round, in my mind, definitely could have gone 10-9 Zambidi. Um, I mean, it was, definitely, it was definitely closer, but just these big overhands like that, he was landing some significant shots like that. I personally, if I was gun to my head, going to say what the decision was there, I would have gone a draw. I think that should have been a draw. Very close fight. Uh, if Masato didn't score the knockdown, it would have been entirely different. And I wish they would have shown a replay of that, but no, nah, disappointing. Sometimes that's K1 for you. You're like, oh, why, why is there no replay? Maybe they don't want you to see the replay. Who knows? And I know Masato goes on here. There's no question about that because I know the result of the tournament the whole night. And it involves him winning this fight for sure. I wish I could hear it in Japanese. I need somebody to translate for me what the the scorecards actually were. Well, there you go, guys. Masato by decision. Do you agree with that? Do you think he should have won that fight? Do you think he got preferential treatment because it's in Japan? Don't get me wrong. I love watching Masato. He is one of my favorite fighters, but I can list probably five fights within K1 where he yeah, maybe shouldn't have got the decision. If not five, definitely three. I can think of three right now off the top of my head where it was very, very questionable that the fight should have gone on any further. That's one of the things about fight sports and not just fight sports, anything with judges. It happens in the Olympics all the time with gymnastics, figure skating, happens in our sport. I've been a victim of it at least once, probably more like twice where the decisions were just, oh my gosh, what happened? Best we can do if that ever happens to you is move on, focus on the next fight, don't let it discourage you, bring you down, sort of dampen your enthusiasm for the sport. Guys, if you enjoyed the video, make sure you give it a like. If you haven't already, get subscribed. Guys, train hard. I will see you back here soon for another video.